Hi everyone. So today I'm going to talk about the kinds of paints we use in art journaling and why, and I'll give a little demonstration. Some of the consideration here is water soluble. Why? Because it's easy to clean up. So acrylics, watercolors, uh, these are the these are what we're going to discuss today. I don't use oils in my art journaling. It takes a long time for oils to dry. They tend to make the pages sticky. So when you close your pages, they stick together, which is something we don't want or like uh, too much as art journalers, right? So I tend to use things that aren't going to make my pages sticky. Acrylics. There's many types. Anything will work. Uh, that's acrylic, really. I use these Amsterdam. Um, I have some Liquitex basic acrylics. I have some golden. You can tell by this stripe right here how transparent this is. You can see the black through it. It's somewhat transparent. I use these a lot when I jelly print. That's another, that's going to be another video though. We're not going to talk about that today. So I also have this turquoise one. And then I have Martha Stewart craft paints. These are my favorite paints. They are pricier than a lot of the inexpensive ones that you can get at any of the craft stores. I usually wait till these go on sale and buy them, but, or I have a coupon. These last, where the other paints that are 99 cents or $1.99, $2.99, whatever they are, they tend to dry up in the tubes, no matter what you do to them or separate. And I don't happen to like that. This, I have never had that problem with Martha paints. So while I'm not really recommending a product, if that bothers you, consider using something like this. Um, these pricier paints over here, you're not going to have that problem, that same problem with. These are artist um, paints that don't do what these craft paints do, but Martha's Paints is a better quality. There are many brands of paints. Don't hesitate to use what you find. And in the beginning, pick three colors, four colors, you don't need to spend a lot of money until you get used to what you're using and what you like. So I suggest, you know, three colors like this. So today is just a basic um, idea of what these paints will do. So um, I'm probably just going to work with the Martha paints and weave these. They all will basically work the same and you can do the same things with them. The paint is very simple. Oh, I also have watercolor here. I'll show you a little bit of the watercolor on here, but this is a beginner set from Windsor & Newton. It's a, you know, um, travel set. Um, so this is what I have. I use these when I'm on the go and I want just a little color wash behind my things that I'm journaling. Now, the beauty to acrylic paints, they dry really quick. I'm going to just add it right to my brush. So I'm going to start over here. And this page, I'm going to coat the whole page. Now, this dry brush technique is something that I happen to like. They're already, I'm already getting pull with this brush. And I'm not covering the page perfectly. By the time we get finished with all the things we're going to do, this spacious page with some white space and things like that isn't really going to matter. So now... This is a dry brush technique, very simple. Let me put this back on. Now, next, I'm not really gonna wash my brush off too much. I have a cup of paint. I guess I wash it off more than I think. I like to keep a towel next to me to just kind of wipe off some of the water. So I'm gonna make my brush a little wet on the ends, tap it off, and I'm gonna add just ever so slightly paint. Now, my brush is wet. This is the beauty of acrylic paint. You could also use it wet. And you can add a little more water and get it drippy if you want. So you would turn it up and hopefully let it drip down the page. This is just another technique. You can brush it on. You can just let it drip. And these are all things that you would be able to use later when we explore um, our journal pages more. So again, this is going to take longer to dry. This side is dry now. 
So I could take another paint. You could see the page is curling here. That's because we have a lot of water and I think it's the sizing that's on the page. It's what they use on the page and it, when it gets wet, it kind of curls like this. This book closes pretty tight and you have an elastic on here. Um, you could put something heavy on it to flatten it out if that bothers you. This will, when you're when it's dry, you won't even notice it anymore. But until this dries, this is gonna look like this. So now I'm gonna take another brush that I have that's dry and I'm gonna use this pink paint over here. Um, and I'm just gonna put a little on my brush. Again, my paints are empty, empty-ish. So now I could go in here and I could just randomly paint in spots. Now you can see this is all translucent. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. By the time we start doing the things we want to do, now I'm not afraid to get in there with my fingers and smush things around. So I'll even do something like that. And I can start layering up more color, more color, more color. Now, you can do all kinds of things. You can add more paint in here. We could take this brush and add some, even if it's wet. These are colors that I happen to know this green and this pink make a little bit of an orange color and I don't mind that. So you could go in here. This is your background layer. So there, I'm going to show you two different background layers. Um, you could paint all of this if that makes you happy, all one color, or you could do it several colors. You could color block it. You could do what I'm doing here and pick a bunch of different um, colors that mix together. You know, this one makes an orange and a pink um, and lay different things in here. You could play with it while it's wet. You could not play with it while it's wet. So we could come in here and do a little. Pulling of the paint. Now, this week. You should play with making backgrounds. Now, here's the beauty to this technique. As you can see, I'll rub my paint off on blank pages. Even though it doesn't look good, you start with something in the background. And no matter how you feel about it, you're gonna layer these pages up over time. And doing this, like taking leftover paint and just rolling it on or brushing it on with a dry brush or whatever, are great places to start for background. So play this week with doing different things with your brush, such as what I've shown here, wet it, let it, let it run, um, put color blocks in. You can let this totally dry and add other colors on top of it. Just play. And if you only have a couple colors, just play with a couple colors. It's fine. You don't need to run out and buy like all the colors. I know we all love art supplies, but I don't want anyone feeling like that they have to have all the colors or the best paints. That's not true for art journaling. You're going to find that simple and basic sometimes are the best. Now, I'm going to say this also. Do you have children or grandchildren, nieces, nephews? Uh, when I first began, I rated my children's backpack for markers, you know, um, crayons, uh, whatever they might have. A notebook paper will make, I'll show you later, but um, would make good stuff to have around your house, you know, things they might throw away. How about their old art? So if they make art in school and they don't like it or, you know, it would just get thrown away, save that. That makes great material for an art journal. So again, don't feel bad about the paint you have. Use the colors you have and just practice and play. Do a whole page of one color. Do a whole page of different color blockings. Do a sparse page with a dry brush like this. If you're really feeling ambitious and you had some black, you might take your, this is a flat brush. This one happens to be an, a half an inch. It's by some, some company called Simply Simmons. They're inexpensive brushes that you can get at some of the craft stores. I don't, uh, I might have found some on Amazon. So just put a little, this happens to be, this is not black, this is um, Payne's Gray, so it's not dark. 
black, but you could play with putting in just some black here and there, or you could put in a whole lot of black. Again, this is Payne's Gray. There's nothing wrong with having black in your spreads. It, you'll find later on it anchors your spreads, and you could do the same thing with white. So it adds something. This is by no means done, but do yourself a few backgrounds and play and practice with paint. So this is starting to dry. You can see that this actually does flatten out. Now I'm just for the heck of it gonna take a... So I keep deli paper, which is this, so that my pages don't glue together. But now I'm gonna take this white page and I'm gonna wet it a little bit with my dirty acrylic water. Sometimes you make do with what you got. I'm just going to wet it some, spread it around, and I'm going to pick a color out of my palette here. And I'm going to show you sometimes just a quick wash on a background, depending on what you're going to add to it, just adds a little tiny pop of color. Now, feel free to add more or less, depending on what you want. I'm just showing you, this is what watercolor does to these journals. I don't like this as much with the mixed media paper. I much prefer this in a watercolor journal, but sometimes when you're wanting a quick background, a light wash like that is just nice. And once this dries, this will uh, dry kind of matte, and it has this little bit of color in it. And you can do a lot with a page like this. But play with your paint this week and learn about it and learn about what you like. So depending on the journal um, you have, if you have watercolor journal, if you have a watercolor paper, it will be much different on that paper. This is a mixed media paper. Uh, if you have watercolor paper and you play with acrylic paints, that's going to look a little bit different. The watercolor paper sometimes, if it's not hot pressed, if it's cold pressed, has a little bit of tooth and it will be bumpy and it will come out not as smooth. That's fine. It's all good. This is your journal. Just play, just practice and figure out what you like. So that's your job this week. You certainly could do this also on just copier paper or just notebook paper. Play around and see what those different um, kinds of papers will do for you. Uh, there's a lot more paint you could add to this, a lot of things you could do. You could do layer upon layer. These are just backgrounds. I'm just telling you about paint and the paints that I use. Um, I like the acrylics mostly, and that's mostly what I use.